What a lot of people don't know about President Norbert Winslow is that there was a President Norbert Winslow. He was the President of the United States. And while his policies might not have had the impact of a JFK or an FDR or an NPH even, he was an important and prominent figure in our nation's history. Norbert Annabel Winslow was the umpteenth president of these United States. He partook in many of our nation's most historical moments. He signed the Declaration of Independence in 1815, though his signature is often omitted from published pictures as he signed it, Fartknocker. John Adams supposedly got a real kick out of that. A Carolina Democrat, upon election, Winslow pursued policies of interference and general surliness toward Europe at large. Norbert Winslow didn't take any guff from anyone. He was hard line about that. Unfortunately, according to most of his writings, he seemed to think everyone was out to give him guff. That was probably the lead-based opium elixir he so enjoyed. In D.C., if you go into any bar and order a Norbert Winslow, you're likely to get the police called. <laughs> I have. Winslow signed the famed Treaty of Pineapples. It's really the only reason we have pineapples in America today. Winslow also had an impact on American culture outside the Oval Office. Norbert Winslow authored a particularly noteworthy book during his presidency that only a few copies of remain. A Time for Bitter Truths, it was called. It was just a list of 163 racial slurs for Portuguese people, and it sold like hotcakes, because the Portuguese have always been known as particularly swarthy and untrustworthy people. He popularized the half-stash for a brief period in 1819, a time when any facial hair was considered in poor taste. He also commissioned a pair of formal short pants he often used in speaking engagements, as he enjoyed showing off his shaven, muscular legs. An original pair of Norberts are on display at his presidential library in Chattanooga. Norbert Winslow punched an orphan. On more than one occasion. He said they had it coming. If they had parents, they wouldn't get punched so much. Norbert Winslow also had an impact on the rise of tension between the North and South that led to the Civil War. There was an incident with a rather passionate young senator who was speaking on the floor and Winslow stomped down to him gave him the signature Norbert slap to the scrotum and called him a willowy, sturgeon-scented cunt. That young senator was, of course, Abraham Lincoln, vampire hunter. He also left his mark on the White House itself. After a particularly harsh bender, Norbert Winslow attempted to chop down the White House with his axe that he lovingly referred to as Axie, the wig mauler. He took to hacking at the doorway of the East Lawn before eventually falling to sleep from exhaustion, and what he later told an aide was the whisper from an opium phantom that told him, Lie down, Norbert. Your work here is done. The Philadelphia Inquisitor reported that Norbert Winslow's first State of the Union speech was only four words long. It was, in its entirety, America's pretty fucking rad. And while President Norbert Winslow is a controversial character in American history, his impact on our country is undeniable, his importance to our nation's formative years uncontested, and his actions wholly American. And of course, there's one thing almost every historian agrees on. He did have the ability to transform into a snow leopard when the need arose, which was more often than you might expect. If I were to sum up Norbert Winslow's presidency in three words, they would have to be courage, opium, and snow leopard. <laughs>